of Deja Vu. It's Friday, August 5th, filling in for Kelly Ripa, Deja Vu, our very own Deja Vu. Do you know, I'm such an autopilot. I was waving up there, and I'm like, well, there's no one there. Let's put, Hi, let's put Art up there. <laughs> Somebody. Yes. Uh, well, welcome. Good to have you down here. Thank you. It's fun to be here with you, Ryan. Talk radio yeah. stuff. You know how we do. Well, we were just talking just backstage. We were okay. talking radio technology backstage, which is a very compelling conversation. We're talking about how technology's evolved over the years, and oh we'll gosh. talk about that off air for the rest of the time, too. <laughs> um, but you, your energy's great. It was just backstage, and you've got people shooting your social media, and you're yeah. doing this, and it's I'm just going to be posted, I'm sure. Listen, I'm uh, trying to be like you. We're having fun behind the scenes. Do you really want to be like I us? Mean, we often wonder. Is she glad busy. she's up there? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's, it's totally fun. But also, you know, it gives you a different experience from just being in the booth at the radio station. It's true. Yeah. Because you think no one's listening. And sometimes we think no one's watching here, too. They've got to be watching because you're here, Ryan. You're now, here. Now, deja vu. How is uh, Hubbalicious? How's he doing? Hubbalicious doing good. We're yeah. getting ready for our vacay. <laughs> You're ready to go on a little romantic We're do a little vacation? Something, something. Go lay on a beach. Get me a good book. You know, every year, every summer, I like to read like um, Daniel Silva. He has like the thriller, suspense. His books come out. I wait till we go on vacation so I can read it then on the beach. I've got this new author, Kelly Ripa, and so <gasps> oh, she's. Yes! Written a book. I'm, I'm going to yes! read that. Oh, I over, can't wait! Uh, I've already got it on pre-order. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, you're. Is he a planner, Abolicious? Is he? The, do you like to? Who's the planner of the couple? I come up with the idea. Hubby Lish comes up with the plans, and he follows the plan, and there's no veering from the plan. Oh, really? You can't break? I'm like, but wait a minute. No, we said we're going to do such and such, but But, but that's not vacation. vacation. No, I like yeah. a, the plan. Hubby Lish, if you're watching, I'm pretty sure you are, the plan should be made, but you should be able to actually breaking the plan Make the plan to break the plan. Exactly. Because that's the best part of the vacation. That's the best part. To say, part. you know what, we're not going to do it. Right? And we would like to kind of lounge out. We do like maybe one or two excursions, and then we're just beach bums all day. Like, seriously. That's the, well, when you have this kind of a schedule, and no schedule is the best thing, right? I Absolutely. Mean, to set our alarms for normal time, get up and act like we're going to the show, and then not have to go to the show, <laughs> is the pleasure of being on vacation. That's what I'm saying. Um, all right. Let's see what we've got going on here, Deja. You know what? They were talking to us about, you know, speaking of vacations, um, um, stress, and I know you probably are under oh, a lot of stress. Clearly. Right? <laughs> does, does Galvin bring it to you? I mean, he walks in and his, like, I think he feels like it's his role to give us some of his own stress. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, ex it's, it's coming out of his pores sometimes. So what do they say? Okay. There? What are the tips? To relieve stress, it's not. Well, co it's coming in here is not relief. So it, what is it? TikTok is talking. TikTok <laughs> yeah. is talking. Oh, yeah. Uh, TikTok's full of new ideas. <laughs> but they're also saying that we shouldn't just be talking. We should be humming and singing. Now you know, I'm always humming something. <laughs> Actually, I see you sometimes doing that up there. Listen, guys, I, I get in my mind. I'm hearing songs. But you should do that too, Ryan. Aren't you a DJ? Hello. Oh well, <laughs> yes I am. I play the hits. <laughs> uh, on on 102.7 Kiss FM and iHeart Radio. Come on, come on. No, I'm not a singer though. But ne I will, neither am I. But do you ever so do you ever warm up? You know, the singers will go Brrr. Do you ever do that before you go on the air? Well, no, I kind of make the face like <laughs> I do the fish or you face. You do the fish face. <laughs> and is that hope that opens it, up the it jaws? It kind of stretches my jaw a little bit. Yeah. At that I think my jaw would get locked. Well, I don't know I if anybody do notices here, but sometimes I'll clear my throat just to <laughs> sort of I've heard no, about I your don't know <laughs> Ryan, I mean, your throat clearing. Uh -huh. do, do it for us. Give it to uh -huh. <laughs> Listen, it's just so you know I'm coming down the hallway, guys. Right? Like, well, that's how you know uh -huh. I'm coming down the hallway when I'm humming. But they say um, if you hum or actually sing, it relaxes you. It has the, the vagus nerve. Is that, is that what? I mean. Vegas, got, Vegas. Vegas. I'm not sure I have the vagus nerve, but <laughs> if there's a Vegas. doctor in the house, please. <laughs> I was wondering. I was wondering. It's, the, it's the, you know, that nice long drive to the vagus nerve. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ryan. No, we'll know if Kelly's Thank watching you, by the inbox. <laughs> <laughs> but they say if you do that for 10 seconds, you know, you so, can clear your throat and you, relax. But, but it makes you relax. Now, they do say that laughing is contagious. That's, now, I will, my mom always says that if she catches me walking around whistling, oh. that I'm relaxed. That I, I will whistle to sort of get rid of stress. Oh. Like, yeah. That kind of a thing. I, know, I can't do the whistle that much, but yeah. Speaking of uh, getting rid of the stress, they also say that... Um, 
stepping away and going for a walk. This is a great city to go for a walk in mm -hmm. New York City. But just, you know, putting your phone down, maybe even putting your headphones away and just going out for a nice brisk walk in nature if you can. I love that. I used to do it when I first moved here. I would walk the avenues and then go down the streets, just go up and down zigzag that just to try hectic. and That's hectic. No, it was, I would do it on a Saturday. Okay. But you, you know, you see all the people and everything, but get the nature. But now it's hard though, Ryan, because you, you always want to have something in your ears. I, I pretend to be listening to something in my ears. I like to listen to the dialogue of New Yorkers at the corner. So wait so, a minute, wait, wait, wait. You, you have something in your ears, mm -hmm. yet you're actually ear hustling? Oh, oh ear hustling. Oh. Ear hustling. Oh. That's what yeah. it's called. Oh. Ear hustling. Okay. Yes, wow. I am an ear hustler. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently I have one of those nerves. So. <laughs> the Vegas uh, nerve. Yeah, the Vegas nerve. <laughs> um, no, it is, to me, it's just fascinating. You know when you're walking past people and you get like eight seconds of the conversation yeah. of two people yeah. gossiping about something? It's amazing. It like it writes itself. So I will often get to a crowded street corner and just turn off my music and listen. And bop my head. You know that guy listen. Ryan Seacrest? Yeah, I see him everywhere. No, they don't. They don't know. That? They don't know it's me. I, I am uh, dressed like a 14-year-old uh, boy with oh, a hoodie get walking here. around the streets. Get out of here. Dressing down, middle-aged crisis. But anyway, they say take a brisk walk out in nature, which here for me, the great, I mean, it's not nature, but a great walk is the High Line downtown. Yes, yes. I have yet to do the High Line. I've got to do it. They say for, for stress relief, go out in nature, High Line with a friend, mm -hmm. and that sort of brings you back down. But the High Line's great. It's an old railroad track. I think we're going to yeah. shoot yeah. something we're gonna next week. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. We're going to see. Gonna Steve Patterson's tour. going out to take a brisk walk yeah. by himself <laughs> to relieve stress on the, high line. on the high line. Now, I used to do, what was it, the, um, the West Side Highway, the river side? Oh, yes, walk? Yeah. yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, no, that's that's, a, well, that, I that's do that dangerous, though. You have to move out of the way. You have to walk on the right side. Then you wait, get what's stressed. Da wait, what's dangerous? Because the bikers and the, and the oh, skaters, there's, separate, there's so many people. There's a separate, yeah, lane. Don't get in lane. the wrong lane. <laughs> no, you're right, because if you step out in front of the bikers without looking, yes, they can get they yeah. you. But... We play, you know, there are these uh, optical illusions. There are these games that we like to play on the show. Kelly's a big fan of these. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry she's not going to get to play this one. But I'm going to hold this up. And Deja, all you have to do is very simple. All you have to I feel do. feel stressed. Okay. Well, take a deep breath. Okay. Tell me what you see here first. Oh, it looks like monkeys or something. Yes. Okay. Now, that's what I saw first. Okay. So you see a monkey hanging from a branch, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. So let's see. <laughs> what does it mean? It means the, the best and worst smells in America are. <laughs> okay, if you saw a monkey hanging from a tree, then you are right brain dominant. So what does that mean? You're an artist. I am. You're a daydreamer. I am. You'll take action based on how you feel more than anything else. You're impulsive. Ah. Oh. Is that true? I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's fun. You're, you're a creative brain. I am. Right? And that makes sense for yes. what you do. Um, now, let's put it back up again. Do you see anything else? I don't know. Right, what if I told you there's a tiger in there? A tiger? Right here? Uh-huh. Oh, the I see it now. Face, right? Oh, my gosh. Isn't I see that, his paw. I see his that's paw. That's amazing how there the brain go. cannot see it until you're told. Right. And that triggers you that's to see crazy. It. So what does it mean now with the well, tiger? Did anybody see the tiger? You're left brain. All right? So it means that you're a planner who doesn't let feelings get in the way of your goals. And that makes sense, because you count us down, right? You're a hard counter. Yes. 10 seconds, everybody. You know what? I, I still have a gift for you in my office. What do you have? <laughs> I do. It's upstairs. I never gave it to you. I'll give it to you for Why? Christmas I'm here every single day. Because we just never had the time. We're busy. We're no, no, moving. We're, we're Frank, <laughs> count us down. <laughs> <laughs> we got 10, 12 seconds, right? You know what? We'll, we'll have to what, get what it. What is we'll it? it Can you tell me what it is? And what's no. it for? It was for Christmas last year. What the heck? It's <laughs> I didn't see about? you. It's you know like, what? It's been sitting in there. Then I felt like it was the, the weird time to bring in. How am I going to bring in? Hey, Ryan, it's Esther, May. <laughs> where's your, where, can you run to that? What, can you tell me what it is? I mean, you can, you can go get it. I mean, it was a general gift that, you know, some people got, but yeah. A general gift? <laughs> uh, my right but it brain, had your name for the Christmas my card. My right brain loves a general gift. I don't know gift. if the Christmas card is still there, but listen, <laughs> right, listen. What do you got? Okay, <laughs> we're talking about, <laughs> they brought up something about some long fingernails. No, I don't really do nails. Do you do the nail thing? I like, do. 
I do. I get my man. I just. But would you let them grow longer? Not really. No. But they do grow longer, obviously, and then I have to. Obviously. Cut them back. But now they're saying the trend is to have the super long nails. Okay. So now. I, I can't. Those are beautiful. But how are you functioning? How do you open doors? How do you put on your clothing, people? I don't. But, I don't get but, it. But and your your phone. How do you get into your phone? With but those? I think they have the. My girlfriends have the pad, like this. You know, the nail. The well, then thumb. I have paddles. I got a steering wheel. I one? just. <laughs> 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 they're doing it like this. They're playing the uh, the Atari thing. But um, no, I don't know how they're doing it. But I just wonder about getting dressed and even the practical side. How are we using the ladies' room? I, I have questions. Can someone give me answers? How do they play Please. Volleyball? How do they play volleyball? Wait, can I understand this? I really <laughs> want to know. Are they are they are they like extensions to the nail on the nail, or is that one long piece? I think it's an it's an add on. Don't, don't ask me, Ryan. Look at my nails. I know. I don't know. I know. Well. Isn't there an article? No. Because I was in the nail salon getting my maintenance done, uh -huh. and they were talking to the woman next to me, and I was listening to her, obviously, about gels. Did she want gels? I've heard, gels. yes. Right, so she was all up into the gel. And then they peeled off some stuff from her, and then she got the gel, and then she went and sat under this x-ray machine. Yes. And I was like, I thought I was going to have to go to the x-ray machine after. Isn't but that where you got to put your hands Yeah, you put your hands, and she had her feet under one, too. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was space age. It was from another It's time. new technology. No, but they say the acrylics are the traditional option, but these days, the lengthening options are the gel extensions. Look at you, Ryan. Oh, gel yeah. extensions. Okay. Yes, but my hands are like, really like paws, so I keep them short. <laughs> I'm so serious. I don't put my, I don't put my hands up like this because they're weird so but if I had long slender nails or fingers well I have I a Christmas it? gift for you soon <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you tea in a year nails. or two <laughs> um, listen we have a great show for you today Isabella Rossellini is with us yes. Maya Mitchell is here and deja vu we continue our summer long series food fluencer Friday face off where your favorite social media chefs prepare their favorite summer dishes now today's chef has amassed a huge social media following in just a year and a half. And it all started with a steak dish. Excited to have him here. Let's say hello to H. Wu Lee. Hello. Hi, H. Wu. Hi, Deja. Hi, Ryan. How are we? Well, we're excited to come out there. So, H. Wu, what are we making today? We're making a coffee spice rub steak. I have the grill going right now. It's going to be delicious, and I'll see you guys soon. Wait, do you rub the coffee beans onto the meat? It's a ground coffee, right? So we put this into a mixture of a rub, and we rub the steak all over and we cook it with the seasoning. The I guess I'll see in a little bit. Listen, All right. anything that's coffee is for me. I can't wait, H. That's Wu. the perfect breakfast steak here, right? All right, H. We'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks for being here. Shall we play? Live's Beast Blast Trivia? Let's do it. Field, Missouri watches us on KDNL. Yeah. Good morning, Kathy Smith. How are you? Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Deja. Good morning, Kathy. So what are you up to this morning, Kath? Oh, just getting ready. I go over and I guess I help my mom on these days uh, anymore. Go get groceries and things like that. She's in a retirement place. So I go over and do what I can a couple times a week. So today's the day. All right. Well, that's nice. great. Well, we'll get you on your way here in a second. You know, Deja is going to explain the game here. Deja, <sighs> how does it work? <laughs> but Ryan couldn't mean it work. Look at this. All of our callers have given us two statements, Ryan. That's right. One is true. And the other? One is false. That's right. If they stop us. What do they win? They'll receive. The? Oh. What are, yes, what are the statements, Deja? <laughs> the statements are, okay, you really are making me work for this, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I've, it's been a long week. Yeah. All right, here are Kathy's statements. Let's see if you can figure it out. We throw a 4th of July block party every year, yeah. or we have gone to the same lake house on Memorial Day weekend for 36 years. All right, let's start the clock. So a 4th of July block party every year. How mm -hmm. many people on the block come to the party? We've got about 100 normally. We live on a cul-de-sac, so we kind of close off that area, and we kind of set it all up where everybody brings a dish. We all set out. We all chip in on fireworks, and it's just a whole day thing. I'm the organizer of it, and we've been doing it for quite a while, and it always works out really well, but it's growing bigger and bigger every year. Wow. Okay, so talk to us about the same lake house. Where is it? In Lake of the Ozarks. Ooh, nice. How did you stumble upon it 36 years ago? 
we we used to go down to the Lake of the Ozarks always to go fishing with my mom and everybody when we were younger. And my aunts and uncles, we all we it was just kind of kind of a family thing. We stumbled on one resort that we loved. It was out of the way. They had like these little rock little houses or whatever. And we we just started going and. We haven't stopped. Now our kids are going. They're in their 30s. So we wow. just keep it a tradition every year. Okay. We're out of time. Oh. Now, there's a... The thing I'm thinking here is that she had a lot of detail to that story. Which right. Which in history, you know, in the history of this game, sometimes all the detail is to get us to go down the wrong path. Right. So that we guess that. Okay. But other times it's just a... <laughs> red hair. Yes. So Alex. what do you, what's your gut tell you is the true statement? All right, so my gut is kind of greedy, and I'm thinking about the July, 4th of July block party, and they have food there, so maybe, maybe, because that's where my gut's leading me, maybe they throw the 4th of July party every year? Okay, is that true? No. Yes! She got the mug. She got the mug. She did it right. Good job, Deja. Congratulations, <laughs> Kathy. Arts, let's spin the wheels. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, you are playing for a trip for two to the Club Barbados. Seven days, six nights in an oceanfront room. It's all-inclusive. That's everything, and it's a value of $9,000. So you have 20 seconds, Kathy, and one guess. Thank you. Kathy Smith, earlier this week, Carson Cressley co-hosted with me. What did Carson say he calls his new horse? 20 seconds, one guess. New horse, name. Earl. Earl, Earl is right. Yeah, Watch this. Earl. Congratulations. You and a guest will enjoy seven days and six nights at the Club Barbados. The Club Barbados Resort and Spa offers an idyllic waterfront setting with sweeping views of the turquoise Caribbean Sea on the island's famous west coast. Guests can be as active or relaxed as they please with all-inclusive offerings such as water sports, tennis, a fitness center, freshwater swimming pool, three bars, dining, and more. Your prize is valued at approximately $9,000. I'm daydreaming looking at that trip. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Kathy. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with Isabella Rossellini. Still ahead on live, we'll learn how to cook the perfect steak from H. Lee in another Food Fluencer Friday face-off. Maya Mitchell. And coming up next, Isabella Rossellini. <laughs> Guys. Thank you for watching On The Show Monday from the resort William Jackson Harper. And we'll start two days of back-to-back -back bargains. Everything will be $20 or less. Plus, Steve Patterson will take us to the edge as he checks out New York City in the summertime. And Katie Lowe's is here as well. That's now, amazing. she wears many hats. Actress, model, writer, producer, director. Please welcome legendary superstar Isabella Rosalini. <laughs> Good to see you. you. Very you. excited for today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The legendary. It's not often we have royalty in the house. So. Right. Um, all right, tell us everything. What are you doing this summer? Oh, I just came back from France where I did a HBO series called Julia. Yeah, it's oh the second gosh, yes. season, isn't it? I, yes. I, I love it. Yeah. We're obsessed. I played uh, Sim Quebec, who taught Julia Child how to cook French food. And she was a very grumpy lady, very. Oh. So it's a fun role to play. Now, are you a good cook yourself? So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Italians know generally how to cook better because we all cook right. and part of my, so much of our culture. So in Italy, I'm not considered a particularly good cook, but in America, where I live, I'm considered a very good cook. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Because <laughs> everything here is prepared and canned food, so just uh, <laughs> doing seasonal thing and fresh fruit, people say, oh, you're so good. <laughs> it's rare that I'll ask about detail here with this, but when it comes to food and what you prepare here in America, what is your favorite thing to make that people ooh and ah over? The spaghetti, obviously. Of course. Yes. Of course. Yes. Do you have so, a course. secret ingredient that you add in your spaghetti that's different from Well, I brought a photo, because one oh. of the things that I'm most proud of, besides my grandchildren, is 
my eggs, not my personal eggs, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> my chicken's eggs. Because uh -huh. you have a farm with all kinds of different farm. animals, oh, right? Oh, look at that. No, no, but look at my eggs. I mean. That's like the perfect one. Aren't they amazing, no? Uh, no. Wait, uh, is this where the Easter Bunny got the idea for yeah. the colored eggs? <laughs> yes, that's how the Easter Bunny got the idea. Stole it from <laughs> my chickens. <laughs> How many chickens do you have? About 150 chickens, yeah. Wow. Wait, hold on. It's a real why farm. are they different? Do you know why they are different? They, they are different breeds. So I have what they're called heritage breed, old-fashioned breeds of chickens. And they are, they are old-fashioned because they may not lay two, 300 eggs per year. They might do 200. Do they taste differently? Are the yolks they, different? Yes, they are. They taste much better. And they I also, they are free-ranging, and so they eat uh, oh, wow. everything. So that, that's what gives the taste to the eggs. All right, so walk us through some of the animals on the farm. What do you have? Okay, so I have some chickens, turkeys, ducks, bees. I'm a beekeeper. Bees, yeah. mm. And I just started a little herd of uh, sheep ah. because I'm interested in wool. Uh -huh. And uh, though the process of wool is very long. Eggs, you know, just waiting for the chicken well, to lay an egg sheep. and then you give it to your <laughs> members of the farm. But and here are my goats and sheep. Oh, that was goats. Goat. Yeah, Sorry. those are goats. I need my glasses. I was wondering. <laughs> Well, well I, I, there is a goat now that lives with the sheep, so she thinks she's a sheep. Oh, there's oh, there. the sheep. <laughs> Why is there the they sheep? are. Oh, my God. This is when they stampede into my house. Look. This <laughs> when is they came inside? Like, they get they in the house. house. Because they always saw me going in and out a door, and I could tell them. They were always looking Wait, at that door. <laughs> and, like, and one day they entered right, into my way. bedrooms, <laughs> walking everywhere. <laughs> they went to the bedroom. <laughs> they wanted to see the action, huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How did you get them out? I, you, you know, they are herd animals, so they generally follow the leader. But yeah. once the leader, her name is Kalof, started to follow me, they all followed her. Got so it. <laughs> I was just convincing her I to think follow we didn't me. notice the beautiful interior of your home there as well. I mean, I have to go back on that yeah. and rewatch the show. Well, it's, I live in an old barn that has converted into a See the gorgeous wood. Home. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So beautiful. Listen, we're going to take a break and come back with Isabella right after this. Stay where you are. Still ahead on live, Maya Mitchell. <laughs> that was a clip from Marcel, the show with shoes on. It's an partly animated film based on a YouTube short by Jenny Slate, who we recently had on the show. And you play Marcel's grandmother, Nana Connie. Yes, Nana Connie. Talk to us Who about is that. slightly gaga, like a little bit, she's <laughs> losing it, but also has tremendous wisdom. Yes. And I think he's a very touching character because I think we all had in our life a, a grandmother or an aunt or somebody who might have been naive or maybe losing it a little bit because was old but always very accepting and very warm so it's a, a wonderful little character so what is it like for you to watch back that scene with the animation and hear the voice that you did for the character well, we did first the voices so there was a, a, a script and like a template so you did that and, without and seeing we, anything we did we improvised a lot of wow. the scene wow. with jenny you know they would set us up and say you know you are and you know you are in a pot and your pot you are very small so the pot is like your farm and so I we would comment and we we would meet together uh, stay the whole day and improvise and then uh, dean uh, the director edited all the voices first and then illustrated it uh, with stop motion. So it was a, a very unusual experience because the actors, first thing you do is learn the lines by heart and then trying to make it natural. Here there were nothing to be learned by heart. It's such a sweet film. What did oh. you want people to take away from your character, Nina Connie, uh, and her relationship with But Marcel? you know, I was a little bit blind about how was the process because I was very interested in the fact that Dean and Jenny started a in YouTube with a short film that went viral and then became yeah. a series of short film, then it became a book that became a bestseller, and now a feature film. I thought, wow, this is the new way of uh, entering the world of art and entering the world of cinema. But I was, you know, I didn't know exactly what it was going to be like, mm -hmm. but it is very sweet and my character is particularly wise. And I, I tell you, a lot of people call me and say, what do you think I should do? And I think, I'm not my nanny Connie. <laughs> <laughs> 
You play the role well, then. So, uh, films, animation, you should do a one-woman show. What do you think about <laughs> yes, that? I mean, that you, I really think this is right up your alley. Yeah. And you are later this month. I am Tell doing a one-woman show. I'm the, next week, I'm doing it at Belfort, the Gateway Theater. I'm doing my one-woman show about my animals. Yeah, I love you know, it. I, and my, they are crazy. <laughs> Life. <laughs> it's called Darwin Smile, and it is actually about acting and animals because Darwin looked at anim an expression of emotions, which is what we actors do, and looked at the expression of emotion in animals. So I dressed up like a chimpanzee, like a, a peacock, <laughs> like a chicken, like How a dog, fun, right? and I make all the expression and what we have in common and what we don't have in common. Fantastic. <laughs> well, it is great to see you, Marcel. The show is yeah. yeah. in theaters now, and Darwin Smile. Well, Isabel's one woman show is at the Gateway on Long Island, August 13th and 14th. You can go to our website for details. Yeah, Pleasure. I'm sorry to say that I'm going to do the tour in October in California. Okay. So this All is right. just we'll inaugurating the tour. Mia Mitchell, right after the break, we'll be right back. Monday on Live from the resort, William Jackson Harper. You know her from the roles in The Fosters? Good Trouble and Teen Beach Movie. Up next, she stars in the new thriller, No Way Out. Please welcome Maya Mitchell. Hi. How are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi. All right, where'd you come from? You came in oh, from Sydney? I came in from Sydney via LA. Okay. Briefly. A little stopover. Yeah, a little, a little, yeah, a little stop. What's the, what's the longest flight you've had to get to Sydney? Oof, um, I guess a flight to New York from Sydney, oh, wow. because you have to go through L.A. anyway, that's so you do brutal. Stop. Yeah, oh yeah, you have, you to, have stop to stop in L.A. no matter what. How many meals are served between L.A. and Sydney? <laughs> not enough. <laughs> right? It's not enough, lot. there's not enough meals. Yeah. There's only two. There's only two? There yeah, and it's be a four. I know, it's a 16-hour flight. Yeah. Wow. I know, they're skimping. So wait a minute, you just came here, you took the flight, but you came from a meditation retreat <laughs> yes. to New York City. I did. Well, I'm welcome trying to back. keep right. it How dare you? No, um, I was. Did you cut it short? I uh, yeah. Ryan? Yeah, it's actually. not my fault. I don't book the show. <laughs> no. And by the way, I would have said no. Yeah, I mean, I thought about it. It's my fault for checking my phone. There's a no phone policy. Uh oh, you broke the rules. I was breaking the rules in the morning. Karma. I Is this know. nine perfect strangers? It, it, um, <laughs> no, and I checked my phone, but there was not enough service to change my flights while I was in my room, so I had to actually, like, run through the bushes to try and find enough oh service to change my flight to get here. You're so you're welcome. From the place. Wait, what is, I, I, help us understand what you're doing at the meditation retreat. I think we all need one. It's a new thing um, for me, for but you. yes, yes, for me, not in general. Mm -hmm. um, I heard it's been around We're for a while. Right? <laughs> Just a little while. Um, yeah, no, it's yoga, some Tai Chi, Are you allowed mindfulness. to speak? Um, you, it's optional. I tried silence. No, not, not for, for you. Me. <laughs> <laughs> not for me, but it was interesting. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So you're originally from Australia. Yes. Are you splitting your time from Australia to LA now? I am now, yeah. I just got a place back home, which is so nice. I was in LA for, I think, 10 years. So yeah, um, now I'm able to be back and forth a little more. So it's right. been wonderful. Now, are you in the city area? Or, or no, area? I, I uh, actually live like uh, kind of in the middle of nowhere. I right. bought some land, and so I just... Oh. Have yeah, a lot of alone time in in the bush. Are there any animals out there? There's in lots the bush? of animals, lots of snakes. I know the Americans <laughs> are quite afraid of. I thought of humans the, were afraid of snakes. Well, I know it's an American thing. Is it really? Whenever I take anyone to, to a, uh, yeah, you are if you live. But there. you're not afraid of them at all. No. So we Americans are weak on snakes. You are, and spiders actually. <laughs> no, and, and fire ants as well. Yeah, I, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, Especially ticks. Fire. I mean, we don't like ticks either. No, no, no. no. You don't like good. ticks. All right, Let's <laughs> wow, let's get a break. We'll come back in just a second more with Maya after this. Talk about No Way Out. Stay where you are. Want to see more live or any of your favorite moments? Just stay social with us. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hmm. I don't even want to interrupt that clip. That's a scene right. from Maya's new thriller, No Way Out. Mm. Is there really no way out? Uh, that's a spoiler. I okay. can't give away. Well, what can you give us? Because Just tell intense. us the ending. That's okay, all. yeah, perfect. Um, no, it's, a, it's an L.A. thriller. It's about um, a young couple who fall in love hard and quickly. Too and fast. Too fast. Right. Mm. Because then her dark past 
comes back to haunt her and their kind of whole relationship is is tested. It seems, it seems like that was a real testing moment there. That was the test. <laughs> yeah, that and was he the failed, test. it seems like. Yeah, oh, yeah. well, at least in that clip. Now, do yeah. you are you a thriller person? Do you like thrillers? I do. Stuff? I love a thriller. I love an action thriller, too. This one has a lot of action. It's a bit bloody, though. So was it hard to get into that dark space for this thriller? Um, no, it wasn't, because Joey Bacicchi, who plays uh, Nick, he's a method actor, mm -hmm. um, and I'd never worked with a method actor before, and so he was super committed. He was, like, walking around set with his headphones in, chain smoking cigarettes, like, you know, just getting very into it. And so it was easy to kind of piggyback off of that. Mm -hmm. um, but we shot this movie in three weeks. Three weeks? Yeah. So wow. it was, it was like a small crew running around L.A. stealing shots. So it was... Could you talk to him then? Like, no. Uh, what, between <laughs> You couldn't even say anything? It depends on the day, like, what, what was on the schedule. For the scenes, the heavier scenes, by the end of it, he's pretty bloody and he's got a broken nose and he's... Yeah, oh, covered wow. in blood. And uh, those scenes, I would not speak to him. I was quite <laughs> quite afraid of him sometimes. But he would give me, like, these little uh, kind of peace offerings to let me know, in character, covered in blood, but like a like a red vine from Crafty. Or like, like a little it's, it's, treat. He would give you like, candy. To, to let okay. me know that we were fine and he but he'd didn't have actually a look hate me. on his face that wasn't No, he wouldn't that. make eye contact. He wouldn't oh, make eye contact just at all. He'd just hand you the So do you want to be a method actor now? <laughs> no. <laughs> because he had he had headphones in and and I'm, uh, towards the end of the shoot I was like what what are you listening to all day, and I listened and it was like this discordant like horrible um, like uh, like almost like the, the the soundtrack of your nightmares like wow. really really awful all day I mean he but it shows that he's so wonderful in this film and um, our director as Raman did an amazing job and I'm wow. super proud because you know we didn't have much time to shoot it and, that's it really well, if you yeah. think about three weeks no way out it hits theaters video on demand and all digital platforms August 12th my great to see you thank you for coming back for the meditation and coming up next Maya Mitchell will be right back. Monday on Live, Katie Lowe's. All right, it's time for our Food Fluencer Friday Face Off. Today's chef's popularity skyrocketed in the past year, and uh, half of it all started with the steak dish right there. Mm -hmm. The first viral video garnered more than 10 million views. Excited to have him here. Please welcome H. Woo Lee. H. Woo Lee. H. Woo. Yes. Coffee and steak, what a great combination. It's right? a great combination. Okay, and the rub is so important. Why is the rub so key to this dish? So the coffee itself adds a lot of umami, mm -hmm. similar to like... And what, what is the definition of umami? Umami is that savory, saliva, in, a, in a good way, the saliva where you're salivating and wanting more of each bite. Okay. Mm. And you want foods that have that, make you do that. That make you do that, right? right? Okay. So, Let's start with the rub. So the rub first, if you don't mind, Ryan, if you can I please do not uh, mind. grind the coffee so we can get a nice fine powder. Nice, right away. Perfect execution. <laughs> okay. And then, Deja, if you don't mind, we're going to put the spice rub together. So okay. We're going to start off with some brown sugar. Brown Toss sugar. It all right into the bowl. Okay. Perfect. We have some black pepper. The black pepper. How much is it? Is there any specific amount? Yeah, oh, just toss it in. Toss it in. Nice. Toss it all in, okay. Toss it in. No stress cooking. No Not stress enough <laughs> coffee ever. Right? Uh, smoke paprika right here. Oh, I love smoke paprika. Ooh, Perfect. So we have kosher salt. Kosher, kosher salt. salt. Okay. Perfect. Perfect execution. We have ground ginger. Ground ginger. Okay. Nice. We have ground mustard. Yum. Ground mustard. And we have our ground garlic. Ugh. I think I have all of these in my cabinet except Great. for the coffee. Come on. So let's this make it is happen. the last ingredient. It's uh, Aleppo pepper. Aleppo. Now that I don't know. Let me smell. Ooh, it smells great. It okay. does. It's got more of a slow heat in it. Perfect. Perfect. It has okay. a more slow heat. It's great in uh, a lot of Middle Eastern cuisine they use mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna mix this all together. Okay. And we're gonna make more rub than we actually need for one right. steak. So you can keep this in your freezer for up to three months or so. Okay. okay. Use it on chicken, steak, fish too, whatever it is. Oh, nice. Now, what if you don't have this Aleppo spice? What can you do? You can use cayenne pepper. Uh, you could use more smoked paprika. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they use Korean chili pepper flakes. What uh, kind of meat do you like to use? I love a ribeye. I mean, who does not love a ribeye, right? Yep. Uh, so we're going to be using some ribeye. ribeyes today, but you can use this on any cut of steak, really. So and you we... can use it on any other kind of meat as well, is that? You can use it on chicken. You can use it on Do we fish. rub? Uh, let's rub. Yes. Yeah, let's rub. Are we rubbing? This is the best on gloves. Rubbing, come on. 
Let's do it. I only have one glove. Oh, now, is here. there a key to the rub technique? Here, you can take that one. Okay. Go for it. You guys. Got it? Yes, yeah, yours. Okay. Is there a special way that you like to just do this so you get everything over. out? Get it all over. Okay. Get it all get it over. All so you want to just dunk it in, let it swim, dunk move it, in it around. Everything. Okay. You want the flavor. Yeah, I'm going to mix up that sugar a little bit. Okay. Right. Okay. All right, go for we're it. Get this glove on. Are we bringing this to us or are we going to keep it let's here? Let's bring this here. Let's bring it a let's little closer. Right yeah. All right. All right, beautiful. come on. Let's, so, uh, let's yeah. do a little rub. Oh, go heavy on it. Heavy. Heavy, heavy on, on the rub. rub. Heavy on the rub. Ooh, you just smother I like it the with rub. the rub. An abundance of rub. Smother the rub. Now, when we put this on the grill in a second, uh -huh. what are we looking at temperature-wise and in terms of how long you cook? So one thing to Can really note over? about this recipe is that there is brown sugar, and sugar caramelizes quickly. Right. So you want to put it more on the lower end of the So you the don't grill. want to burn with that burn conversation. Okay. You want to cook the insides more, and then you can get a hard sear on the grill, and then you'll finish off your steak. Pretty simple, right? It is. It's a lot of flavor. flavor. Yeah, really get that in there. Yeah, get it. Ryan, get Ryan's there. getting that. Listen, Ryan, no gloves. <laughs> no gloves. I mean, gloves. It's, it's all love. Sugar, no gloves. Sugar, it's mustard, it's garlic, it's ginger, all this stuff I love. It's coffee. Right, let's put it on the grill. Let's put it on the grill. Let it cook. We'll that? come back here in just a second, too, and we'll give it a try right after this. We'll be right back. The perfect steak. <laughs> Try any of this summer's recipes. Just log on to our website at kellyandryan.com. Outside here with social star and chef H. Wu Lee. We're going to cut into the coffee spice rub steak in a second. But first, some general steak cooking tips. What do you say? So, first of all, I love drying out my steaks in the fridge. And I know it might sound a little weird, but that's the process of dry aging. So, mm. at home, anyone can do this. You have a wire rack with a tray. Okay. And you can leave your steaks out in the fridge one or two days. It helps lose moisture dry out the crust more so you have a better steak. And Did you cover product. them or just leave them open? You can leave like them this. open, open okay. like this. Great. So what's the best cooking method? I know we're grilling now, but what's mm -hmm. the best cooking method? Depends on the thickness of steak, right? You need to understand your cut of meat. Okay, so break if it down it's, for us, if it's really thin, you can just do a hard sear on the grill or in okay. a pan. And then if it's a thicker cut like this, you might want to have more time to cook the inside because that's just going to take more time naturally. So you can do on a low temp in the oven and then sear it. You can sear it first, go on the low temp to finish it. How do you get, I know we're cooking this sort of on low, slower mm. here because of the sugar, right? Yeah. How do you get the perfect sear marks? Perfect sear marks, honestly, you got to dry out the steak. Okay. Drying out the steak. Do you put, put oil on the steak? I put avocado oil, salt, avocado, and pepper. High heat yeah, index, high, high heat, oil. and it's great. And it we're using great. butter today? We have butter, so if you have a leaner cut of meat, like this top round, or you have a chuck eye right here, there's less fat in it, so you want to incorporate more fat into the steak, and fat is flavor. Okay, and when it's done, you just sort of like feel firmness? The best thing, Thermometer. Oh, okay. Or the thermometer is the easiest way, right? Or the tool. It tells you exactly what you need. 125, 130 is around rare, medium rare. And that's the best way. If you don't have that, no, you need this. <laughs> <laughs> you need a thermometer. Or uh, years right, of experience. Let's take off the grill. Let's, let's take off the taste. grill. Let's give a taste of this. Yeah. See what it should it looks be like. done by. Oh my gosh, it looks beautiful. Wow, I smell it. Oh, that's beautiful. The aroma is no. fantastic. You can head to our social platforms to like this recipe. The food influencer with the most likes during their voting period will walk away with $5,000. Plus, we'll make a $5,000 donation to Feeding America in their honor to help provide 50,000 meals to families who need it most. The winner will be announced at the end of the summer. Yep, and for today's recipe, you can go to our website at kellyryan.com. And while you're there, don't forget to enter our weekly sweepstakes where viewers will have a chance to win a $500 prize. Okay, now let's get into this. Go for it, Ryan. All right, Deja. Who wants to try? He's digging in. He's digging in. Deja, there you are. All right. First bite there. Let's take a little bite. Okay. You're such a great host. You're cutting for her. <laughs> you know, it's what I was born to it's do. It's delicious. Yeah. Maitre d', host, whatever it is. <laughs> Serve the dishes as well. It's We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Thank you very much. Great Thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you.